Okay, so um, next is the rabbinic literature section of the study. And in the rabbinic literature section, when we look at the Targum Jonathan, this is an Aramaic and a rabbinic translation of the book of Isaiah. The, in the, this, by reason, then becomes a very important translation to look at as we study the book of Isaiah. And so um, we want to look at the Targum Jonathan here on these last verses. And it says right here, it says the following. It says, uh, this is Targum Jonathan, son of Uziel, Isaiah 19, verse 14 to 25. Okay, so the Lord has sent among them a spirit of error, and they have caused the Egyptians um, to err in all their works as a drunkard staggers and tra tramples in his vomit. And the Egyptians shall have no king to reign, no prince, noble, governor, or ruler. At that time the Egyptians shall be weak, and they shall be afraid and fear on account of the exaltation of the power of the Lord of hosts, which he is lifting up against them in the land of the house of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. If anyone mention it unto them, they shall tremble because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath counseled against them. At that time there shall be five cities in the land of Egypt, speaking the land of Canaan, and swearing by the name of the Lord of hosts. The city of Beth Shemesh, which is to be destroyed, shall be called one of them. And at that time there shall be prepared an altar before the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar by the border thereof shall before the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness before the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, when they shall pray before the Lord because of their oppressors, and he shall send unto them a Savior and a judge, and he shall deliver them. And the power of the Lord shall be revealed to do good to the Egyptians, and the Egyptians shall know the fear of the Lord at that time. And they shall worship with holy sacrifices and offerings. Yea, they shall vow vows before the Lord and shall perform them. And the Lord shall smite Egypt with a stroke and shall heal them and they shall return to the worship of the Lord and he shall hear their prayers and shall heal them and at that time there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria and the Assyrians shall fight against the Egyptians the Egyptians against the Assyrians and the Egyptians shall serve the Assyrians and at that time Israel shall be a third party to the Assyrians and the Egyptians shall serve the Assyrians and that oh, okay I reread that. And at that time, Israel shall be a third party to the Egyptians and the Assyrians, a blessing in the midst of the land. And the Lord of hosts shall have, have, have blessed, saying, Blessed be my people whom I have brought out of Egypt, because they sinned before me. I carried them captive into Assyria. And when they repent, they are called, okay, when they repent, they are called my people and Israel mine inheritance. Okay. Repentance is important. Okay. And now, uh, what's. The Masoretic text, remember, it said, let me go back up to that. It, it, Isaiah, Isaiah said that they're given a Ruach Evin, okay, a Ruach Evin, this spirit of confusion. We come down here to the Targum Jonathan, and it says that they're given a Ruach Detau, a spirit of of error, okay, the spirit of error, and this, this has been given to the people. The spirit of error is exactly what its name implies. You know, the spirit causes people to go into error to the extreme, especially in things pertain, pertaining to God. We note that we are able to see this spirit of operation today in our own culture in in the LB, LGBT community as an example you know uh, the example that came to my mind was those who are involved in gender pronouns you know where men who want to be women and women who want to be men the trans people okay so those who are involved in this are unable to define what it means to be a man or what it means to be a woman you know if asked they say they're unable to define what constitutes or what determines male and female okay so that the fact is that male and female are written right into our genetic code at the deepest level. We know who we are based upon our biology. And we know, for example, men and women who have died thousands of years ago, we are able to look at their bones and tell the differences and distinguish whether they're male or female based upon their bone structure, upon one's bone structure. We, we don't need to know how they thought or how they dressed or how they, li they lived in order to know their gender, whether they're male or female. The reason this is possible is because gender is written into our basic structure, into the fabric of our DNA. 
you know, scientist, or, sorry, um, scientifically, this is common sense. You know, but it's this this ruach uh, that that tau, the spirit of error, has been given to many, causing confusion on this issue. And so, this spirit is the exact opposite of the spirit of truth, which is given from God. And then, um, is this is this spirit of error is part of the kingdom of darkness. Okay, and a good question is: Can someone have the spirit of confusion? Right. Can someone um, have the spirit of God in them, believing these things that are that are given to them from the spirit of confusion? And I tend to think not. Now, in addition to these things, when when studying another language, for example, let, let's take Greek and Hebrew. If, if one has issues or is confused on pronouns, how to assign pronouns, it would become literally impossible to learn these languages. You know, take, for example. The, from this Greek grammar called the Basics of Biblical Grammar, written by William D. Muntz. In chapter 12, on the word autos, okay, Muntz makes a particular point concerning this pronoun. And he says, for, he says uh, this, and I quote, For example, if Robin is the antecedent, you would say, I would like to talk to her. You would not say, I would like to talk to it, because Robin is not an it. You would not say them because Robin is only one. And you would not say, I would like to talk to she because since the pronoun is the object of the preposition that takes the object case, her. I would like to talk to her. End quotes. Okay. So this, this, this statement, I was, I was reading through this grammar uh, recently. I was re reminded of this. You know, that the significance of what Muntz, Muntz is saying here is how, how grammatical rules dictate the use of pronouns, and it would be incorrect language structure to do opposite of what the grammar rules require. It becomes pretty obvious how learning a language would become impossible when one follows the gender confusion that is taking place today. This spirit of error is obvious in those who promote the gender pronoun confusion that we see going on today. I mean, what an embarrassment it is to those who are possessed by this spirit of error to make them um, make these kinds of mistakes in the use of the English language. Now, this is why Isaiah mentions how embarrassed these people are in their sin because their, of their beliefs, their behavior, and their actions run counterintuitive to truth and life. And this is exactly the case for everyone who promotes these things today. How shameful and what an embarrassment that is. And note that the evil one specifically targets God's people and especially leaders. You know, this functions in such a way as to promote half-truths in order to make God's people walk in error. The fruits of the spirit of error are false doctrines. They're twisted truths, right? And the love of the world. This, this spirit produces false doctrines such that God's people misunderstand the scriptures and encourages to create doctrines and laws that are contradictory to the truth of God's word and lead to disobedience to God's holy commands. You know, twisted truth such that the evil one confuses the meaning of the word God, just as even sorry, just as Eve in the Garden of Eden was confused by the serpent. You know, twisted truth is the mixing of falsehoods with God's word in such a way as to facilitate disobedience against God's holy instructions for our lives. And the love of the world, from the sense of placing material things um, as more important than the Lord God in heaven, this is manifested as lust and covetousness for, for money and for sex and anything else that makes it difficult for one to discern and walk in God's will for their lives. You know, Paul mentions this according to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. He says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed from Thessalonica. For Thessalonica. Okay, now, we also note that John, the apostle, wrote in his epistle, in 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, concerning this ruach det tau, this spirit of error. And so he says the following here, and you can see that, uh, let me read through it in English, from the King James, it says, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knows God hears us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay. 
So here John speaks of those that are um, of the world. Okay, we look at we look at the the Syriac. It says the holy name Ola Oma. Okay. And that that is the same as it saying as the Hebrew text saying Hemmin Hemmin Haolam that they they those who are from the world that the, the world listens to them okay that um, the world listens to them the Haolam Shamea Lahem right and in each of these translations. We find um, we find that what is written according to uh, the Greek. Okay, so we look at we look at the Greek, and it says it says altoi ek to cosmo. Okay, and uh, let me see right here altoi ek to cosmo. Okay, that means he that is ek, he that is from the world. You know, the, the, I think, you know, when, when looking at these languages and what, what really draws this out when we look at the, the Hebrew and the, and the Greek and the, and the Syriac and what really draws out is this observation of the one who is from. Okay, so we're, we're looking, at, um, looking at this word ek, right? That is from, or the word name, or the word um, mean, okay? And this is significant. Those who are from the world. It directs us to the origin of these people with, from whom the world listens to, okay? So the world listens to those, to them because of, of uh, they are from the world, right? And, and this is how the Targum Jonathan translates this. It says in Chapter 19, verse 14, it says, The Lord hath sent among them a spirit of error, and they have caused the Egyptians to err in all their works as a drunkard staggereth and trump, uh, tramples on his vomit. So John, who uh, writes here from uh, the, in, in his epistle, he says that he who is not from God does not Listen to us, okay. Okay, so it, we're looking at this right here. Me, sheeno me Elohim, enenu shome alanu. Okay, so he who is not from God does not listen to us. Okay, and then, um, that's uh, this Greek right here. Okay, so this means that these people are unable to listen with understanding of the Word of God because their origins are not from God, but from this world. Okay, this, this spirit of error leads the Egyptians in their error to walk according to their false gods. And we know the modern parallel here, right? In the example that we gave above, you know, right, right, previously here. Now, John writes, and he says, ek tau tau, uh, and he goes on, and he says, from this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, right? And the Hebrew text, it translates, it writes, it says, mitoch kach patirin. Okay, and uh, where are we at here? Okay, right right here mitokach mecherim and the 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 interesting thing here is is this this word mecherim is being acquainted with knowing someone right and this is for the sense of, of being familiar with right and recognizing this spirit of truth right that comes from the 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 disciples right as opposed to this spirit of error which is confusion now, Rashi 
Rashi on Isaiah chapter 19, verse 14, parts 1 through 2, and he says the following. He says that the Lord hath poured out, or poured into its midst, he mixed a drink for them in its midst, which, which perverted their spirit. An expression similar to Proverbs 9, 2, she mixed her wine, okay? And we find a parallel Right again to the pseudographa, which we had mentioned earlier in, in part one of the study. And Rashi goes on mixing a beverage in a cask until he blends it to its proper flavor, is called meseth. Okay, and then in part two, perverseness. And this is evim, the name of a malady of confusion. Okay, so Rashi, Rashi says that this evim, this ruach evim, is a uh, is a name of a malady of confusion. So the, Rashi interprets this as the Lord God of Israel pouring out His mixed drink in their midst, which has the effect of perverting their spirit. And remember that when we drink something, it becomes a part of our lives and our bodies. It's just like alcoholism leads to drunkenness and walking in your vomit, just like a very example that Isaiah is giving, right? And Remember that uh, when one willingly drinks alcohol, the effects are manifested in his body, providing the illustration of disobedience through the stumbling around, you know, that this is how one lives, you know, disobedience. He's just stumbling around doing, you know, this, that, and the other, and everything, right? And in par the parallel to alcoholic beverages is a perfect example of how alcohol has the capacity to cause one to stumble. You know, Rashi, you, know, you, lose, you lose your sense of balance. I've experienced that, right? Drinking too much and you lose your sense of balance. And Rashi parallels this to Proverbs 9, verse 2. It says, um, it, okay, it says, She hath killed her beast, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. So, and he, he looks, he's comparing this Proverbs 9 and, and the wisdom of, Wisdom is mixing her wine to cause one to be wise. And, and the wisdom of God causes us to walk in his holy ways, you know, right? And wisdom mixed drink causes humility and devotion to God and leads one to prayer. You know, humility is a major weapon to, be, um, to being set free from this spirit of error, right? And the reason being is that pride causes one to fall for those who trust in the flesh as opposed to the spirit. You know, I mean, you, you note that um, the pride is used for this very movement, LGBTQ, right? And that's that fascinating. And it just it speaks to this truth here of the need for humbleness, for humility, the need for the Lord God Almighty to set us free from this. And uh, these things are, are needed in order us for us to be set free. There's no way of, of being set free without God's help. Now, um, in the humility leads to our submitting our lives to the Lord and to his word. We submit because we fear him, and humility causes us to trust in him, to make us strong in the midst of trials, in the midst of our weaknesses. And the way to successfully overcome the evil one is by faith in Yeshua the Messiah, who strengthens us in the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaEmet, right? And which is given from God. And devotion is a function of our, um, it is a function of um, anachnu me'elohim. And that, that is, we go back here, um, that, uh, that what I say, that devotion is a function of, of this, anachnu me'elohim, okay? And... That is, uh, that is this, this right here in the, in the Syriac, Elaha, of God. And that is our being, this spirit, that, that we are from God. Okay, Anachnu, we are from Me Elohim. Anachnu Me Elohim, we are from God. Our being from God. We are capable of hearing His Word. We are capable of listening to Him. We're capable of obeying Him because we are of Him, right? And that this is why we must be born new, right, in, by faith in Yeshua. You know, devotion leads to consecration, right, from the sense of separating ourselves from this world and walking in God's holy and righteous ways. You know, all these things draw us back to a Torah perspective, right? And, and this is how 
The psalmist spoke in relation to these things according to Psalm 91, verse, um, verse, verse 1 through 3. Okay, so here, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 3, and it says, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Okay, so um, being that we are that we are enough new the Elohim that we are from God, we are living in the shadow of the Almighty, just as the psalmist is saying in Psalm ninety one. Okay, this idea of making God our refuge leads to prayer against this ruah detal, the spirit of error, right and Prayer is a key tool, since Yeshua said, pray so that you are not tempted, according to Matthew 26, verse 41. The prayer, in fact, connects us with the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaEmet, and helps us to understand God's word and what the Lord God intends for our lives. Paul wrote, according to Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be in being enlightened, okay? And so this indicates what we receive by faith in the Messiah, in Yeshua, that the power of the Spirit of God dwelling in our midst, this Torah-centric principle, right? And giving us, that gives us these things, the power of God, right, to overcome this world. You know, how amazing that is. This, this is so what we have in Yeshua, the Messiah, and this is who we are as God's holy people. And so we, we every day we should pray, asking the Lord that we not be deceived, that the Lord will fill us with his presence and with, um, with his Holy Spirit so that we can know truth, we can discern between what is right and what is wrong and what is truth and what is error. And then we can, we can go on and, and we can bring glory. Because of that, we can bring glory unto God by the way that we live.